I'm Bernie Finkel, Master Steward for the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. We're here at Brown's Ranch this morning to discuss how the Native Americans in this area use their plants for fiber and construction. In our prior videos, we talked about how plants were used by the Native Americans for food and medicine. Today we will discuss how they were utilized to make fiber for their cordage, clothing and baskets, and for construction of shelter for their families. The most important plants for the indigenous culture's fiber production were agaves and yuccas. Both agaves and yuccas are monocots. One of the characteristics of monocot plants is that their veins, which are conduits for food and water, are aligned in a parallel fashion throughout their elongated leaves. In this area, yucca was the plant of choice over the agave because it was plentiful. It produced the best quality fibers, and agave leaves contain high levels of calcium oxalate, which could cause dermatitis in the handling of the leaves. The soap tree yucca and the banana yucca were used extensively for fiber, with the best quality fiber coming from the younger leaves, with the banana yucca having the highest tensile strength. The process of turning the leaves into fiber, decortication, began by placing the leaves on a stone or wooden surface. Depending on what surface was used, the Native Americans would use the opposite material to lightly pound the back and front of the leaves to loosen the fibers from the plant material surrounding them. This was done to mitigate the damaging of the fiber in the pounding process. Removal of the loose vegetative material from around the fiber was done by using a blunt scraping edge and exerting moderate pressure on both sides of the leaf. The next step was to remove as much of the remaining plant material as possible, making the future cordage somewhat stronger and easier to use. Where water was available, the fibers were redded, using the microorganisms in the water to remove the remaining plant material from the fibers. The fibers were then separated by fingernail, and the fibers were ready to be plated into cordage. These threads were used to make rope, mats, sandals, clothing nets, mattresses, and baskets. Agave leaves were normally baked in a pit to make the scraping process safer and easier. The strip fibers with the agave needle attached could be made into a needle and thread, and the fibers could be made into rope, cordage, bowstrings, and burden baskets. Baskets played a very important part in the life of the indigenous peoples, especially those that were nomadic. Baskets were used to carry heavy loads over long distances, to collect food, to haul water, and to haul food for cooking. Baskets were used in every step of food processing, and specialized basket utensils, such as harvesting trays, sifters, cooking and serving bowls, and containers to store food. With the advent of free time, the Native American basket makers began to turn away from the utilitarian aspect of basket making. Skilled basket makers strove for perfection and design, form and technique to prepare these objects of artistic quality. While the mesquite played an important part of providing food for the Native Americans, it also contributed to their fiber needs. Material from the inner bark was rubbed and pulled away to make soft fiber that was used to make nets and clothing. Fiber was also attained from the mesquite's roots to make cordage. Plants played an important role in providing shelter for the Native Americans. For nomadic groups such as the Apache and the Avapai, a temporary domed shelter was constructed using mesquite and willow for the infrastructure and grasses such as bear grass and bushes to fill in the infrastructure. 
Grasses and bushes were also used as a material for their bedding. For non-nomadic tribes like the Pima and the Maricopa, living arrangements consisted of a roundhouse, ramada, and windbreak. The framework of the roundhouse was usually made from mesquite, cottonwood, and willow. The framework was covered with arrowweed and adobe for insulation. These structures were used primarily for sleeping and escaping severe weather. Most family life took place outside under the shade of the ramada. The ramada was usually built with four mesquite posts connected with wood beams or saguaro ribs with arrow weed piled on top to provide a roof. The windbreak was constructed using a mesquite lumber frame with arrow weed to help screen the wind. Its main purpose was to provide an environment to cook food and take care of domestic duties. While the acotillo wasn't significant as a construction material, it was important because it was used as a living fence. Ocotillo stems were planted and used as a corral or as a fence to protect their gardens from animals. In our three videos, we briefly cover the parts that plants played in the sustainability and well-being of the Native Americans in this harsh environment. But plants have contributed so much more. I would like to recommend Daniel E. Mormon and his book, Native American Ethnobotany, Timber Press, 1998. It is an extensive compilation of the uses of plants by Native North Americans and will give you further insight as to the spectrum of these uses.